Good morning everybody, my name is John and I'm an educator from the NJV and I'm here at Deadly Narratives, an exhibition at the Koori Heritage Trust. Right now I'm uh, on Wurundjeri and Bunurong country so I want to pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging and as you the audience are watching from many places I want to pay my respects to traditional owners all across the land. Now you might wonder why uh, someone from the NJV is poking around in an exhibition uh, at another gallery, and that's because the Koori Heritage Trust are actually our neighbours. It's just a short step away from where I work at the National Gallery of Victoria. And I love to come down here and check out what's on display from the very, very talented artists of the Koori community. And right now, I have one of those talented artists, Cassie Latham. Cassie is, a, is an artist. She's a Wurundjeri and Tanarong artist and weaver, educator, and is very, very passionate about sharing her culture. Cassie, how are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Well, well, hello. Hello, lovely to have you here. Um, we've got many questions from our audience, but I kind of want to start with uh, one of my own. What is this beautiful object that we're looking at right now? Yeah, so John, um, this is my healing map. This is um, a sacred um, piece of work that I love to create. Um, I only normally create about two or three a year. Uh, sometimes I get commissioned to make them though, so sometimes like it goes, it extends from three a year to maybe 12 a year, it just depends. But these are very sacred for me to, to create is because I'm passing on tools and knowledge as well when I make them. So if anyone um, is in the presence when I do create these beautiful weave mats, they learn the technique I do is the traditional weave of the coil and then also to putting together the beautiful foraged emu feathers. Um, and they have a beautiful process as well. So this is a healing mat. Wonderful. Well, as I mentioned, we have heaps of questions. Very, people are very curious to hear about you and your work and also this healing mat. So I'm gonna have a look at some of the questions that have come in. Um, the first one is from Jasmine. Jasmine asks, where do you get materials to make this artwork from? Ah, so I just explained that. So um, native grasses yep. from country. Uh, because I do a lot of traveling, I like to stop and collect and have a look around. So the Lamandra, there's New Zealand flax, uh, there's kangaroo grasses, there's wallaby grasses, and um, what other grasses would there be? Dinella. So yeah, so they've all got different um, stories behind them. And the reason why I like to mix up my grasses is because um, our weavers didn't just use one grass for weaving. But with this healing map, I like to um, you know, uh, basically weave in the stories of histories of our native grasses being used in women's weaving. And Jasmine, the answer also is uh, emu feathers. So that's forage from an actual emu. So going up um, up to country where I live, on Gunai Kurnai country, there's a beautiful old emu and he's 58 years old and his name's Pete Pete and he molts uh, three or four times a year. So. He leaves me these beautiful trails of emu feathers that I go along and I, I pick up and then I take them home and I process them and it takes quite a long time because every single individual feather is smoked, is sung to and is hand woven into these healing mats and there's probably over 40,000 40, emu feathers in this one alone if you wanted to count them you're most welcome. <laughs> but, <laughs> well I'll take your word for it on that Cassie. Yeah. So the process is a lot more about, um, not just about the making of it, but also the, the kind of, uh, well, things like the, the ceremony of it. Is that an important part of? Yeah, definitely. Because th this is actually not a wall hanging. This is actually um, my healing mats I create uh, for galleries and they are hung up. But traditionally for me personally as well, um, they no normally put down and I sit on them and I teach other um, girls how to weave but I also do beautiful healing like hands-on healing um, so I would sit someone on that and I would sing to them and I would um, play my clap sticks and I would um, dust ochre and I would smoke them as well to cleanse all negative away from them so these are a floor mat and it's also like a healing space as well but when you do hang it up and you do rub, rub the emu feathers, you do get that sense of empowerment because the emu is a very, very strong bird, as we know, but it's feathers, like you have a feel of those. They're soft and delicate, aren't they? But they're nurturing too. 
yeah. and they're very, very warm. So you can imagine sitting on this and, um, you know, just, just relaxing, closing your eyes and, and listening to me sing a song and, you know, sprinkling with beautiful ochre and, and um, while you, you nurture the beautiful emu feathers. That sounds very special. Um, we have another question. Uh, Pradeep has asked, how do you think up a name for an artwork? Well, it's quite easy. When I, when I, when I think up an, a name, it's normally in language and it's very, very, um, yeah, it's very uh, strong and significant when I come up with a name. Like, even though this is a Healy mat um, with the emu feathers, it's more of a Mangan Baramu. So it's more of a healing, like Munbalam Baramu Mungam, meaning a healing emu feathered mat. So do you know what I mean? It's um, everything has has its place and time and story. So if I can can carry on the traditional ways of my ancestors and their language when I come up with an artist title for something, I think that's more special than rather than making up something. So to, trying to keep it real because that's what, who I am. I like to keep it real and I like to um, pass on and always pay respects to my ancestors because at the end of the day, it's their work that's coming through me to continue. The process. And Cassie, that language is language of the Kulin people? Tangarong, yeah, Tangarong. Tangarong. Right. Yeah. More questions, shall we? Yeah, definitely. So, um, Hamza has asked, what other kinds of art do you make? Um, I, I love to create lots of different things. So, I love clay pots. I love going out and recently, or these past few days actually, um, I've gone out on country and I've collected lots of um, pipe clay, so the beautiful white pipe clays and different types of ochre as well. So I love making clay pots. Uh, I love collecting shells and creating midden pots. To, as I said, every, every piece of my artwork has a story behind it and it always comes back to the old ways of people. So I, I kind of look at myself as a traditional artifact maker. So making things from natural resources because I'm so involved with sustainability and keeping country clean and alive and, and also to protecting and nurturing. Um, I think that's really empowering. So my artwork, you know, we could, um, you know, have the healing mats. I do weed baskets. I do native jewellery. Um, I even collect snake bones and make beautiful snake bone necklaces. So it, I kind of, yeah, I'm just multi, yeah, There's talented just culture in different. Running through yeah, you. there is. Yeah. yeah, and it's really important. Yeah. Great. That's lovely to hear. Um, I guess this is a, a similar question we've got from um, from Archer. Is what is the biggest inspiration from your art? You kind of answered that in that question. Yeah, didn't you? it's well, it's definitely um, yeah, it's my ancestors. It's um, how they lived in the past, but also to it's definitely country. Like I, you know, when I wake up every morning, I'm woken up by Wild the Crow. He's always in my pine tree, and he starts, you know, wiring. And um, yeah, that's my inspiration. I get up every day and I hear his call, and then I go outside, and then I'll see cockatoos, and then I'll see, you know blue tongue lizards and and that's what inspires me is nature nature and country and um, my environment and then you know when I do go out I I always look at my area my environment and wonder how did they do it in the past how would they do this how did they live like at the moment there's this lake and it's just all dry and I'm like but it wasn't dry because I can see the stumps and I can see the camping grounds and artifacts there. And I'm like trying to put their place and time together. So that's my inspiration, you know, from, from my artwork and from who I am, it's, it's all, it all comes up and it just pours out. And, but there, I get guided by Marat, by spirit that takes me on these little adventures that I get little snippets of things. And then I go home and I reflect on what I saw and then I create and then it just happens. It's the endless, uh, inexhaustible creativity of nature, isn't it? Just yeah, speaking to you. It is. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's really nice to hear. <laughs> um, now, this is an interesting question from Arlo. Um, Arlo's heard about this term, country, um, and he's asking, can places where there are lots of buildings, houses and roads also be, co be called country? Yeah, definitely. Like, um, we, we say like Melbourne, that's country. It's Nam, isn't it? Yeah. So Nam in Aboriginal language is Melbourne, the city of Melbourne. And at the end of the day, we're, we're on country just because we got built around concrete. It wasn't like this, you know, years and years ago. You know, there was country. Underneath us is, is dirt, isn't it? Mother Earth. 
So we, it doesn't matter whether there's buildings, whether there's trams, whether there's buses or you know, anything, it's still country. That's, that's really great to hear. Here we are on country. We are on country. Wurundjeri. We're wandering and born on country. Born on country. Yeah. Yep. More questions coming up from the audience here. Um, uh, now this one is sort of, this is from Sybil, and he kind of answered this in other questions, but why is making art important to you? It's, it's important because I want to share my skills and knowledge to the youth, and that, that's my passion. Like, my ancestors are there to guide me, but the passion for, for my creativity and my art practice is children. Um, without children, uh, we have no future. We have to educate them, we have to be there for them, and that's, that's why I do what I do. Um, you know, sometimes um, I, I go a little bit above and beyond when it comes to sharing knowledge. But at the end of the day, um, if, if I don't do it, um, you know, if I don't stand strong and empower people, um, my life is really meaningfulness. Like it's, it's not, yeah, it, it's got to be, in, I, I want to inspire people. I want to inspire children and to, um, you know, whether they're non-Indigenous or Indigenous, to be able to come together and to be able to learn and create and be empowered by our, our beautiful country. Well, we've got lots of children watching us today, the yeah, next generation yeah. of art artists. Yeah, uh, and, that's, and that's the most powerful thing, isn't it? Because at the end of the day, um, yeah, they're our future creators and I want them to be able to carry the stories forward and to be able to share, you know, and if I can teach them and empower them, that's, um, yeah, that's my job done. Yeah. They can do it, I'm sure. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> um, well, this is a, a kind of related question. I've got a question um, from Esther, who is curious to know, she wants to learn how to become good at making art. Where do I, wh where do I go? What do I need to learn? It's in here. It's in here. If, if, you, if you really want to create art, you know, you, you, you've got it in here and you've got it in here as well. So, you know, you get guided by people and obviously, you know, you're gonna learn at school little techniques like growing up, I was the same, you know, I was a born artist, you know. I was born, you know, I, I was out in the mud when I was little, you know, you, you make things, you create things, you go to school, you learn from your art teachers and then you go off into your direction. So you're gonna pick up different forms of art and different varieties of mediums and everything, you know, through your life. But if you really wanna know where to start, just, just have a look inside, have a look inside yourself and, and think about what you really wanna create. And then just, you know, go outside, be empowered by nature, pick up a few sticks and a little bit of grass and have a, have a little make and see what, see what happens. It's, so have a lot of well, faith in yourself. Have a lot of faith in yourself, yeah. yeah. And, and don't ever be afraid to, um, to create, you know, because creating, you know, I, I didn't realise where it would, you know, where I would be in this time of my life. And, you know, I've built up my career over, you know, 34 years. And it's just been an adventure. And I just, I wouldn't have it any other way. Lovely to hear, Cassie. And thank you so much for coming down to talk to me and our lovely audience. Um, so wonderful to hear your story and see the beautiful results of that story as well yeah. on display. Um, thank you to our lovely audience out there. We always love to see you online. We love to see your faces, hear your questions. We'd also love to see you in the gallery at some point, whether that's the NGV or right here at Koori Heritage Trust. We might even do both in one day. Uh, that's all for now. Goodbye and see you soon. Thanks, Cassie. Nanguchen, thank you.